Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Arias, and today we're going to be talking about recursion pharmaceuticals. We'll get into what they do, how they do it, and their advantages over traditional drug discovery avenues, as well as their pipeline, and why I think they may have the potential to 100x over the next one to two decades. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and leave any of video suggestions and feedback in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start out by introducing what recursion does. Recursion is aiming to create the drug discovery platform of the future by using their in-house wet lab, in combination with cutting edge AI. They have done millions of biology experiments and then used machine learning to both quantify the results of these experiments and find new candidates, using AI to suggest new drugs based off previous tests. This platform will give them an immense advantage over traditional drug development if they are able to prove it could reliably generate new legitimate drug candidates. Recursion will be able to iterate through many more drug candidates through their platform and then quickly move to disqualify these candidates and go forward with only the most promising candidates. An investment in recursion is a bet on the long-term viability of this platform, the Recursion OS, and its ability to reliably generate drug candidates going forward. So far, through my research, I really like their approach and I am very excited to understand more going forward. Let's talk for a moment about how the conventional drug discovery process works. The current normal drug discovery process is extremely problematic. It takes an exceedingly long amount of time and has a very high failure rate and is as a result very expensive. To be exact, the success rate is only about 4%. It takes roughly 14 years and costs between $1.7 and $2.5 billion on average. This all stems from the traditional drug discovery process of identifying a target disease, working very hard to understand it, and then trying to find a compound to treat it. Additionally, all the low-hanging fruit or relatively easy drugs have already been found using this process. This has resulted in a decrease in new drug candidates going into the clinic and R&D spend on finding these candidates in recent years, which is completely counterintuitive to the fact that technology is advancing faster than ever. We're relanding rockets reliably from space and have computers that would have been supercomputers 20 years ago in our pockets, but are finding less potent new drugs than ever. This doesn't make sense, and obviously drug development needs to come through into the digital age that we're in now. The human brain is great at a vast amount of things, but if we could teach artificial intelligence to do drug discovery for us in a much more efficient way, that would be extremely valuable, and that is what recursion is aiming to achieve. Now, let's talk about the specifics of how recursion aims to change all of the problems we just talked about. Recursion started by building massive data sets with their in-house lab. They take pictures of both healthy human cells as well as cells with a particular disease they want to treat. To give you scale for how much data they have captured, one of the executives said that they have about as much data as Netflix does, which is truly an immense amount of data. They then teach machine learning algorithms to quantify the differences between the two cells because the differences are not always apparent to the human eye. They then start applying all sorts of compounds, both known drugs and new chemical entities that they develop to the disease cells and ask the computers to tell them which drugs make the cells look rescued or like healthy cells again. This is called their brute force search approach, where they literally look for all of the options and find what works. And they can do this best because of the sheer volume of tests they run on a daily basis, as well as their machine learning algorithms to quantify what makes a cell look rescued. This is the process from where eight of their 10 highlighted pipeline candidates came from. However, they have a new way of finding candidates, and it is through what is called inferential search. And this is how they expect to find most of their new candidates going forward. Recursion has built a map, if you will, to human biology. They are using this map to find new drug candidates, and they call it Recursion OS. They even have the 58th the most advanced supercomputer in the world to run the system, which allows them to run training that used to take a week or so in less than a day now. I am not sure about how exactly the inferential search program works, but I imagine that they image some disease cells and then query the computer for what known drugs or unknown compounds it thinks will work to treat these cells. They have also talked about other machine learning algorithms that they are designing to determine the tolerability of the drug early on in the development. For example, in one of the presentations that I linked below, they talked about growing many small pieces of heart cells for imaging so they can better determine if new candidates would be toxic to the heart. All these innovations, if proved to be effective, would stack up to drastic improvements in the speed of drugs to market, as well as a decreased failure rate. This, of course, would reduce costs for developing new drugs dramatically, which would obviously not only be good for shareholder value, but be great for society as a whole. This process may also allow recursion to find new drugs that have not been thought of in the past by human developers, because humans often have a bias to the way everything has always been done. This slide here juxtaposes the current drug discovery pipeline to to recursion's optimal pipeline. Recursion points out three key improvements in their ideal pipeline over the traditional one. First, as you can see, the funnel is much wider, meaning they are able to screen many more therapeutics for a possible treatment. Second, they identify and narrow their search much earlier in the cycle, with most of the candidates atrophying by the preclinical stage and is almost totally narrowed down by the time they enter the clinic. Third, the ideal pipeline is dramatically faster than the traditional pipeline. All of these benefits will add up to an immense advantage for recursion if they are able to actualize this ideal drug discovery process. The wider funnel will find more and better treatments. The quicker the narrowing of the funnel will save on R&D costs. 
The shorter development time will also save on R&D cost and get the treatment to the people who need it faster. This all stacks up to make a very compelling case for recursion if you think I have the right approach to make this process a repeatable reality. Let's talk for a moment about their pipeline. They have 37 programs total, 10 they have highlighted, and 27 remain undisclosed programs that are either in the early discoverment or preclinical phase. Keep in mind while we go through here that the recursion has stated they believe multiple billion dollar per year revenue candidates are in their pipeline. I won't go super in depth on each program, but here's a rather detailed overview. Most of these candidates are described as being orally bioavailable, which I think just means it consumes like food, so I'd imagine they would be in the form of a pill. The first four programs are all using known chemical entities for a new purpose, found through the brute search method, and also have completed phase one trials, which test for safety on healthy individuals. They were all found to be tolerable in their phase one trials. The first treatment is for familial adenomatous polyposis, or FAP, which is a type of cancer which has a patient population of 50,000 in the US and EU5. The other three diseases are rare genetic diseases called GM2 gangliocide, neurofibromosis type 2, and cerebral cavernous malformation, which have patient populations of 433,000 and 360,000 respectively. Each of these first four programs are expected to begin phase two trials within the next four to five quarters, according to the company. The next four candidates were all found using brute force search, just like the last four. However, these drugs are all new chemical entities that recursion has created and advanced in-house, and they have multiple compounds that they are still optimizing. The first of these four is to treat cortisol difficile colitis, which has a patient population of 730,000. This lead is in the preclinical phase. The other three of these four leads are in the discovery phase. The first of these three is neuroinflammation, which has a huge patient population of 13 million in the US and EU5. The other two new chemical entities are to treat rare genetic diseases, Batten disease and Charcot Marie Tooth disease type 2A, with patient populations of 2,000 and 15,000 respectively. The final two programs that they have disclosed were found using the inferential search method that they have began using around the middle of last year, and this is where recursion expects most of the leads to come from going forward. Both of these leads are oncology programs. The first uses a known chemical energy for the treatment of immune checkpoint resistance of STK11 mutant non-small cell lung cancer, of which there are about 30,000 cases per year. The final candidate targets MYC inhibition for use in oncology with a new chemical entity and has a patient population of 130,000. Recursion called out that many of these programs either will show benefit over the current available treatments or would be the first treatment for the disease, as there are no treatments currently available. Additionally, and this is quite indicative of their future, Recursion said that of the 27 undisclosed programs, 11 were discovered using the brute force search method, which leaves a whopping 16 discovered using the inferential search method. All 16 of these were discovered in just the time since last July of 2020, and I think this suggests a dramatic acceleration of new programs stemming from the inferential search method. And this makes some sense as well, considering the brute search method, if I understand correctly, requires 10 million experiments to find and confirm the candidate, whereas the inferential search method draws back off those experiments to computationally find the candidates and only takes about a million experiments to confirm this candidate. Recursion also mentioned the volume of programs that they may be able to generate in the future might make them a good partner for bigger pharmaceutical companies, which have been showing lower spending on R&D, and I think Recursion is suggesting that they might be tapped by one of these companies for new programs to fill up their pipeline. One of these partnerships that they have already announced is with Bayer in August of 2020. Both parties agreed to initiate 10 new discovery projects over the next five years to discover novel therapeutics for fibrotic diseases across multiple organ systems, including lung, liver, and heart. Bayer will also contribute its proprietary library of 500,000 compounds to this partnership. Finally, Recursion has also mentioned that while partnerships thus far have been limited to small molecule research, they could expand into novel therapeutic modalities like gene and cell therapies in the future. If you want me to make a video that's in more depth about each of these candidates and their potential to go into gene and cell therapies, I'd be happy to do so. Just let me know in the comments. Finally, for my conclusions. Recursion has the potential to do a lot of good in the world if they are able to get their Recursion OS platform to a place where they can quickly and successfully advance new candidates to the market where they can improve the people's lives. A couple of times in their S1, Recursion said that they are a biology company scaling more like a tech company. And I think this statement is an important thing to keep in mind as I value a company like this. I'm not interested in this company for the programs they currently have in the clinic. However, the platform that they will use to build and discover the next 100 candidates is very intriguing. Recursion has a huge 
huge upside if all goes as planned, possibly 100x in my opinion. And here's the rationale there. There are multiple $200 billion plus pharmaceutical companies such as Merck, Pfizer, or AbbVie. If Recursion were able to build out their platform like we've talked about earlier, I see no reason they could not be more successful than any of these companies over the long term with their more streamlined drug discovery process. And with only about a $4 billion valuation, that leaves a lot of upside to go. With all that being said, this is an extremely speculative company. They have no revenues from selling therapeutics and like will will not for another four to seven years. They haven't even started a phase two trial yet, and they could struggle for a company and a stock for a number of reasons. However, I'm willing to take that risk at this time because I think this platform could be huge. Something else that I will mention is that ARC has started a position in recursion in their ARC Genomics Fund and also wrote a very bullish note in their weekly Monday email a few weeks ago. As usual, them investing isn't my impetus to invest, but the confirmation doesn't hurt. Finally, for what I will do with this stock. While I have not purchased any recursion at the time of recording, I am getting very close to doing so. I will be looking to add heavily if it falls and as I get a better understanding of the company. Lastly, I made a playlist linked in the description of a few great keynotes that explain this company way better than I ever could and I highly suggest you check them out as you continue your research. Thanks for watching. What do you think of recursion and the recursion platform? Where am I off in my assessment and what's your price target? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. My goal is to get to a thousand subs as soon as possible and I'd love to have you along for the ride. Thanks again for watching and have a great rest of your day.